him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt, uh, th Thus thou shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Literally what God is saying is, You crossing through the Red Sea, was me coming over you like an eagle looking after you. When I was a little boy, we had chickens. And as a, as a, we weren't raising chickens. You just had chickens. If you were in a country, you had chickens. Who didn't have chickens? I mean, chickens is what everyone had was chickens. And, and, and you ate chickens. And Granny would wring the chicken neck, and she'd pop the neck. If you've never seen a good Granny grab hold of a chicken with a clothes hanger, She'd tell you that clothes hanger, bend that thing, whoop it up on that. And the chicken leg can't bend any further than that foot, can't do any further. So she'd grab it, whoop it up in there, grab it by the neck. And, and she was, this should, have, this should be in the Olympics. <laughs> she could grab that chicken, man, and just give it this right here. Whop! Like that. And the weight of that chicken would fly to one side. And she'd have the head in this hand. And that chicken would take off running without a head. Blood be squirting everywhere. And when it fell to the ground, she said, Now you go get me that chicken. And we'd run out there and bring that old chicken in. She'd pluck that chicken. There was just something about having chickens and doing all that. And, and Judah, sit down, son. Amen. And, and doing all the things that she did. It, it was a, a neat thing. So what I find is that we would go after chickens and then we had a hedgerow in front of the house. I wanted to get me one of them little chicks. So I snuck out there and I reached up through the fence. And I grabbed me a little, you know, you ever watch them chickens? They're all in a line. All them little chicks in a line. They follow mama chick. And I reached up through there, and I grabbed that chick, and I pulled it through the, the hedge. And when I pulled it through the hedge, mama came right after the chick. I mean, I didn't even know she was good. As soon as I did this right here and got on the other side, here she come. And she went to flogging me, man. She went to beat me with him. With him and, and I can't even imagine what it would be like for a five, six-foot span eagle to come down and mess with me with the talons that are so sharp that it could, could rip you open in midair. So God's saying, I helped you cross over. I helped you do all of this thing. Like the eagle is full of ups and downs. My friend, I have found out that life is full of ups and downs. There's successes and there's fears. You know, but for me, even though I've been attacked by a chicken, <laughs> even though I've jumped out of planes, even though I've had some ups and some downs, life's been good to me so far. I love my mama, she treats me so nice She keeps the nest full of rabbits and mice She says I'll fly, but this tree is so tall It's awful scary, I'm afraid I might fall I think she's crazy, but she says I'll learn fast That, I, just, I know that part of the song, okay? But eagles, you know, they learn to fly through struggle. And here's what you find in life. If you tried to take that eagle out of the, out of the egg, you'll hurt that eagle, just like a chick. You can't do You got to allow them to go through struggle. And I know our kids at times, they go through struggles. I, seriously, we do help them too much. We don't let them work their way through life's problems. But in life, suffering is inevitable. But misery is optional. You know, we hear about... Uh, all about that in the songs we sing and the singers who often... I, I heard singers sing and I thought, there's no way that person had, had any trouble. But then you would hear someone sing like this and later you found out their life was full of struggle. Busted flat in Baton Rouge Waiting for a train When I was feeling near as faded as my jeans Huh? Bobby thumbed the diesel down just before it rained and rode us all the way to New Orleans. Well, I pulled my harpoon out of my dirty red bandana and I was playing soft while Bobby sang the blues. Uh, windshield wiper slapped the time I was holding Bobby's head in mine. We sang every song that driver knew Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose Nothing, it ain't nothing, honey, if it ain't free Bobby, 
someone like Janice Joplin singing and have no idea what was in the background of her life and her in her mid-twenties already passed away from an overdose. See the same thing with Amy Winehouse, mid-twenties. Saw the same thing with so many others that passed away because life became a struggle and instead of dealing with the struggle properly, they medicated or turned towards other things that got them in trouble. So again, it has its struggles. It, it, like the eaglet in the nest, you've got to go through it. And we can respond all types of ways. One way we respond, we respond irrationally. You know, we think, no, not me. It's not me again. It's always me. I'll never get ahead. God must hate me. Everybody's against me. You know, when I hear stuff like that, it reminds me of a show in the 70s that my dad and mom used to love. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Oh, Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. Oh, if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Oh, Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> Take, take that microphone right there. Jay, take that mic. Run it back there to Pops. Pop, you got your line down? Uh, get, get, yeah, hold on just a sec. Just stay right there. Wait till we get you your cue, okay? Because we not even practiced this stuff yet, but this, this ought to be fun. So at that moment, guys, it, to me, Hee Haw was more of a, uh, it was my mom and dad's show. You know, it really was. But, but so when we do this out in front of everybody, because we're going to have an extremely mixed crowd, I, I'm, I'm just going to tell these guys, what, what do you guys mean making this into a hee-haw show? Hey, hey Grandpa, Grandpa, what's for supper? Well, old Joseph and Danny, they killed a hog, and the little Gene put it on the pit, and Pastor Jerry threw on a log. They've got plenty of onions and pickles for the barbecue and, Tammy. and Tammy's got enough sweet tea for the whole darn crew. Thank you. There yum, you go. yum, yum. <laughs> All right. And we'll, we'll have that fixed up a little bit more because it's not going to be like that, but Dad, we got you a window to look through. We got you a few other things. So, so the first thing, you, you get, guys, you get is to think irrationally. Second thing, during, during uh, the times of struggle, we can react resentfully. We blame our failures on others, or we go self-medicate, we get higher, we get drunk, to forget when we sober up, the problem is still there, it's only got bigger. Either way, it, unless you deal with struggle properly, you're not going to get any satisfaction. <laughs> Feel like that little thing right now, Jennifer? <laughs> Stepping on your head. 
It's just mic on. You didn't hear me? Okay, all right. Check it. Just check. Just test it. Some respond to struggle passively. They go into a shell which lingers into depression. Or we can respond faithfully. We can trust him and do something. Amen. And do something. Every miracle started out as a problem, a struggle. And we've struggled with the life of a believer is always line upon line from glory to glory, every level, a new devil, as you can tell. Life can often be a series of blessings disguised as trouble. We stay in the nest till we're ready to fly. So here's the thing. you got to prepare to get out of the nest and fly. Oh, I love the monkey. I thought God was just another fairy tale Meant for someone else but not for me Life was out to get me That's the way it seemed Disappointment haunted all my dreams. Y'all remember the song? Then I saw his face. Now I'm a believer. Not a trace of doubt in my mind. I'm in love. Ooh, I'm a believer. I couldn't leave him if I tried. see like two classes of people out here. Some of y'all ain't never heard nothing like that. Y'all in the Beyonce and all them others. And then the other group out here that's trying to be real good, they're going. You loved the monkeys, didn't you, huh? I loved the monkeys, man. That was, that was just a cool show. That was, that was just fun for our time. And it was the best we had. Amen. I loved that little dune buggy. But when it comes to believer at this point, I'll probably share a little bit about be, being a, you know, a believer, a disciple, a Christian. This is what God's called us to be first as a believer. But then the stirring of the nest. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 11 says this. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings, so the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. The common thought in these two passages of Scripture is that God carries us. In this text, we notice that the eagle has the ability to dwell on the crag of the edge of the tooth of the rock, the forefront of the cliff. This allows the eagle the ability to see the prey and have vision for a great distance. His eyes go back and forth, seeking whom he may bless. So when I look at this, I see the nest. It's the stirring of the nest. The first thing I notice, and, and guys, when you, when you see our set at the, uh, at the campus, you'll realize where a lot of this is going. But do Deuteronomy 32, 11 says, like an eagle that stirs up a nest. There's several things here. First, the nest, the rest, the pest, and the test. All right. We're going to walk through this. First, the nest. Everybody say the nest. the nest. That nest is where security is. It's where you get fed. It's where our kids are now. They're at home in the nest. They're enjoying life. It is good. My goodness. Some kids actually have their own room. When I was a kid, me, my brother, and sister lived in the same bedroom. The door locked on the outside. I can see why. When we got a little older, my daddy moved my sister out, did not take away the lock. Put it there for me and my brother to be locked inside the room. That was to give them peace. We didn't even argue when the door was locked. We knew something was up. But it's a home, a place of security. It's a feeding grounds. You know, there inside that nest, you can imagine the excitement of that little eaglet when it was born. That, I know it wasn't a cue, but as close as I could get. I'm sorry. There's a new kid in town. Just another new kid in town. <laughs> <laughs> There inside that nest, the eagle starts into a place of resting. It's growing now. Now, it's too young to jump out of the nest. It's like a 16-year-old in a fast car. It's only going to get them in trouble. So it's important for them to grow into and to learn a lot more about things in life. It's a place to be nurtured. Everything is done for you. If we could only remember our infancy. You know, sometimes I hear people say, I just can't wait to get older, can't wait to get older. And then there's us. And we say, man, I'd love to go back to the nest. If I could get back in there, I could give me some rest. Amen. I could, I could just enjoy a little more time with mom and dad again. I, I tell you what, those naps, uh, it was so peaceful. I've got a peaceful When 
I, when I hear new kid in town and peaceful feeling, and, and I think back to the 70s when I was a teenager, uh, and all those, all those uh, wonderful love songs. Do you, do, you remember, do you remember this little love song? I ain't gonna tell you what we're gonna do to them muskrats on Sunday, okay? <laughs> but you just gotta hang out to find out. So here, the, the the eagle is growing, and things are good. Now here's what you gotta watch out for in life. Let, let me just tell you something about church real quick. When you get born again, you get put into a nest. This is where you at. This church, the little country church, is a nest. And, and there are those of us who've been in this fight for a long time, and we, we're praying for you and believing God for you. But it's a place first of rest for you. You, you want to mature, you need to grow. The Bible even talks about giving you the milk of the word. That, you're not, it, ain't, it ain't being mean. You're not ready to, for the meat yet. You've got to handle the milk. Amen. And as you move through the milk, you grow in, in faith, and you move as a believer and being a disciple. But then there comes a time that the snake wants you to jump. And this is, where, this is the most volatile time in any new believer's life. When you get upset, when you get mad, when you can't handle what's going on, and you decide, I'm just going to leave the nest. If you jump out of the nest too early... The snake going to get you. Now, you think, may think this is a cartoon, but this is not a cartoon. This is a reality. When you even study nature, the snake will move up on the rocks and try to cause the eaglets to jump for fear without the mother eagle being there or the father eagle. Now, uh, eagles will grab that snake and pull it off that rock and kill it before it ever hits the ground. They're very, very protected. God hovers over us, and he watches over us. So if you've ever jumped, if you've ever jumped out of the nest too early, my encouragement is get back in the nest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you don't want to pest to get you. You don't want to have that opportunity to, to take you out. So when it happens, oh, then it comes the test. Everybody say the test. Yes. It's got to be the most exciting time. Man, in every... Kid in here at one time or another just wanted to test. Mom, Dad, teach me to ride a bicycle. What are they asking for? They want a little more freedom to get out of the nest. So you put them on a the bike and you run behind them and you push them. And they're watching to see. They want to look back and see if you're there. And then you let them go and they take off right. Wonderful. Then what happens is they want something with a motor on it. Then later they want something with a motor in it. And it's still the test. The test is going on in their life. They've got to pay attention to what's going on. So here at this time in this juncture, when that eagle gets so big, the mother's going to start moving it out to the corner, and she's going to get ready to kick its little rear end out of the nest. Now, when you're probably 21, 22, you might get ready for that. But if you're 40-something, <laughs> mom's going to have to kick you real hard. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, it's time to fly. Mom stirs the nest. She makes it uncomfortable. She'll start going and pulling the down out of the nest. And then you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get that upon time when it's mom, mom, get mom, 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 And then, but then it's going to shift. And you're going to hear the voice go, mom, mom, what are you doing? Mom, where are you going with that knife? Mom, not my waterbed. So I'd like to know where you got the notions. So I'd like to know where you got the notions. Rock the net, don't rock the nest, mama. Rock the net, don't tip the nest over. Rock the net, don't rock the nest, mama. Rock the net. What 
your mama does, she starts stirring up the nest, man. She stirs that thing up and gets everything active inside the nest through the idea of opening the eyes. Now, the eagle's eyes are open. It's grown. It's ate lots of worms, and it's gotten bigger. The eyes are woke up, amen, and she's rousing and everything inside the nest. As the eagle gets tossed out of the nest, an amazing thing happens. It's, it's, it's crazy. The little eagle starts to fall, and then it stretches the wings out and catch a little wind, and it'll move upward and go, man, this is good. Just like all of us in our life, you never believe you could lead somebody to Christ. You probably never believe you could ride a bull till you got on one and held on tight. Amen. But it's, it's, it's getting the wind up under your wings, and then you start moving. And then, and then the little eagle will start flapping its wings. Here, flap your wings. Amen. It starts flapping its wings, and then it gets tired, and the wings drop, and it begins to plunder to the ground. Now, watch an amazing thing. Here comes the father. He flies out of the sky. You never saw him come, and the little eaglet didn't know it. And all of a sudden, that father comes down and catches the eaglet, takes it back, drops it off in the nest, and the little eagle goes, whoo, thanks, Pop. <laughs> Next day, here comes mom with that same knife. Mom, don't do it. Please don't do it. It's a new bed. And you gets thrown out of the nest. It starts flapping its little wings. This time it flies a little further, gets a little higher. This is good. But then it gets tired and starts to plunder to the ground. Oh, here it goes. And next thing you know, here he comes. Father catches him, picks him up, brings him back up, drops him in the nest. Whoa, Dad, I knew you could do it. And it's just like us mom and dads to keep bailing our kids out. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, so here comes the next time. The next day, the little kid is out on the edge of the nest. And Mama's still sleeping. And he wakes up to Mama and says, Hey, Mom, 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 Mama, Mom, wake up. Mom looks at it and says, Hey, Mom, watch this. And all of a sudden, the little eaglet does a back somersault out of the nest. Begins... <laughs> begins to flap its little wings. And as it's flapping its wings, he realizes no matter what happens, my father can fly faster than I can fall. Daddy, if you want me to be closer to you, get closer to me. Daddy, if you want me to see I just want to do that part. Don't we don't get I would come running. You just, I pray these little bleeps don't happen during Sunday. How about that, huh? <laughs> Trying to get them all out of my system right now. Daddy, if you want me to be closer to you, get closer to me. Let me tell you guys, the Father favors whoever favors the Father. And when you get close to the dad, there's something about him flying close to you. Get to spring. You may not even have a physical father in life, but you have a spiritual one. And if you get close to him, if you favor him, you'll become one of his favorites. That's how God functions. That's how he works. He's not fair. He's looking for people who favor him. Yeah. You favor him, he'll favor you. And he'll catch that little eaglet, and he'll bring it back up to the top. And once he gets it there, and after several tries, the mom will wake up again, and he'll say it, hey, mom, watch this. And at that moment, You'll hear the little eagle say on his way out of the nest, if I could see it, then I can do it. If I could just believe it, there's nothing to it. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. moving through the skies seeing the blue on his own you can see the struggles were well worth everything that he went through now not just a little eagle anymore he's mature he's becoming grown like his parents I believe he's thinking man look at the view y'all know it sing it with me 
I can see clearly now my fear is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky. Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue sky. Oh, sing loud! I can see clearly now, my fear is gone. I can see all. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Paul actually told Timothy in the New Testament, stir up the gift inside of you. Again, it has that same attitude. There's nothing like finding new God-given passion and gifts in your life. And if you're not careful, uh, you're going to get yourself. We're going to skip that, ain't we, Dick? Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to skip that because we already done that. Just. Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift. <laughs> So it's important to do that. You, you know, you, you, you may say that he was going to take it to the limit. Are we doing that one? Yes, sir, we are. Just check it. <laughs> take it to the limit. 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 It's time to fly. Oh, that was cute. I liked it fast forward. That was cool. Y'all give Renee a hand back there. She's doing such a good <laughs> job. Amen. Amen. So the hovering over the young. Uh, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That word hovering literally means like an eagle hovering over eaglets, to look over. He managed the earth. He, he looked at, guys, you almost can look at the earth as an egg. And God hovered over the egg of the earth, and then he gave it life, and then life broke forth. And then life keeps breaking forth out from the egg. It was as if God was saying, now this is how my mandate for civilization. So when the eagle does this, zoologists refer to this as mantling or connecting. In other words, the mother and the, e and the father eagle are transferring to that eagle things that that eaglet needs to know about. It, they're saying things to him. And I believe there's times that God hovers over us, the Spirit of God broods over us mm -hmm. to share and impart things to us. But you've got to be where the Spirit of God is to speak to you. Now, for one to get out of the nest, you have to face your giants. You've got to deal with the word fear. There's no way you're getting out of that nest because you were just born courageous. It doesn't happen. Amen. We all fight, face fear, and we all got to deal with it. So the first thing you've got to do is confront your fear honestly. You know, even if you still feel that there's fear there, we use a phrase, and this is the new cue for this, guys, do it afraid. I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Let his spirit carry me I want to fly like an eagle Till I'm free Fly into the revolution See, I'm watching it back there in the back, so... 
I think it's just cool to watch it fly. A penguin flying. Okay. I just caught that. Second, confess your worry. And by the way, everybody say do it afraid. You know that in being a part of our church. There are things that we do all the time that you've got to learn to do. And, and I, I get to manage or super, uh, supervise a tower, a 40-foot tower, in which people, almost everyone that comes up there, has some sense of fear in them before they go off that 300-foot zip line. And I just say to them, and there's a sign there, for you to do it afraid. You have to. Uh, then I'm going to ask you, man, are you a little bit afraid when you get on that bull? Huh? Does it make you pucker? It was me, son. Yeah. There ain't no way. That bull, he starts to buck, and I, I just I give you great kudos, dude. Psalm 34, 4 says, I, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. <laughs> Worry and fear are first cousins. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So where did that come from? Well, it had to come from the enemy, and it had to come from in us. God didn't give it to us. So God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a, and a sound mind. So when you understand this, you, you've got to get back into your place and say, okay, now, I, I can't, if I take on fear and if I stay scared all the time, I'm fighting against God. How many know if you fight against God, you are not going to win? Yeah. That would have been a good cue there. Is that close? That was it, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> hate being right all the time. I was ready. I was ready. He said, give it to him again, Pastor. <laughs> God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. If you're fighting against God, you're going to lose. Yeah. Broken and worried without God, son, I fought the Lord and the Lord won. I fought the Lord and the Lord won. I needed courage cause I had none. I fought the Lord and the Lord won. I fought the Lord and the Lord won. I like it, Howie. So, so what you got to do, and guys, it, it may sound a little corny at times, but you got to claim God's fear insurance. You got to look at it. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That we're not to have man fear, to be uh, scared of everything in life or the, or the strongholds at night. He, he is my strength. Psalm 118.6 says, The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. You know, my nephew sells insurance for a living, and he will tell you that insurance is based off the fears of what ifs and if onlys. And people swallow it up, hook, line, and sinker. We're almost overinsured because we're afraid of being underinsured. Fourth, cultivate a closer relationship with God. Great love toward God equals strong resistance toward sin. The more you love God, the less you're going to sin. That's the bottom line. It's falling in love with him. Also, love is the way to drive fear out of one's life. Uh, Numbers chapter 32, verse 12. Not one except Caleb and Joshua, son of Nun, for they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Their hearts were after him. The opposite of fear is not courage. It's not trust, but the opposite of fear is love. 1 John 4, and we're going to close with this, guys. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth not is made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. The Message Bible said there's no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love. Let me say to you again, most of us are learning to love. Like the eagle that's learning how to fly. Let me be serious with you here. We're learning to love. 
as, as children, we come up loving those who have loved us and our parents and things. But then as we get older, we have to choose to love. And as we love one another, it's not well formed because we're still scared, we're still insecure, we still battle with, with uh, identity deficiencies. So all of us in this place have got to learn how to love. We've got to learn how to banish the fear of not being loved or not being cared for. We've got to do this. We've got to mature our love. And as we mature our love, fear starts leaving us. No longer will you have to run from relationship to relationship to relationship to find somebody to care for you because you know that God loves you. Amen. So I think first you've got to get it uh, vertically correct. You've got to deal with him. Amen. Stay more and more in love with him. And then horizontally we start dealing with one another. And the more we start loving, the, we don't have the fear of abandonment. We don't have the fear of uh, insecurities and not having the, the, the finances for our future. All of a sudden everything is in God's hands. And when it is, your sleep will be well, your days will be well, less diseases, less physical problems, because now we have love. Everybody say love. love. So to overcome fear, it doesn't take more courage, it takes more love. Who knows why? Am I supposed to cut y'all? Y'all think they did good? Why don't you stand a little more? <laughs> y'all better get your enthusiasm on. I'm telling you what. You're not going to get this in any other church. I promise you. Amen. Listen, something, something clicked right here at the end of that message. I, I, I know you caught it. We went from just kind of a trying to entertain to getting serious about love that if we don't love one another it, 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 the scripture says no greater love than this for a man to lay down his life for his brother when Jesus came to earth he showed himself to be that brother he gave his life up for us and he, he, he willingly did it uh, so when I, when I read these scriptures and I read it was John that said this it's John the beloved this is the guy that hung out with Jesus and head on his chest it's this is the man who, who saw, it, out of everything Jesus did, it wasn't the miracles, it wasn't, it wasn't the walking on the water, it wasn't all, it was the love. That's what John saw. So when you go to 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, what are you reading about? Love. You know, greater, no, no greater love. And he just keeps laying out love, 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 love. It, it is the answer. You know, many of us have gone through a lot of hurts and pains and things of, of that nature, and we've, we, we've felt, we, we've, we, we've just uh, 
we felt unloved. But I'm telling you, if we'll start doing this book, it, it differentiates us from all other religions, all other groups. Love. It made Brother Hubbard my brother. Any other religion would have made him my great-grandpa. <laughs> Amen. Would have made him my brother. Amen. It changed everything up. So to me, when I, I guys, you did, you did phenomenal tonight. I really yeah. think you did. Amen. Amen. And this, be, this is going to be tweaked again tomorrow night. We're going to tweak it again Saturday night, and we'll have it, we'll have it, we'll have it down by uh, Sunday morning. You know, so pray that we, everything just kind of comes together. A lot of dominoes have got to fall to make this thing happen and make it a success. And a lot of it, guys, it may not be the band. It may not be my preaching. It may be something you do that day. It may be somehow you reached out and said, can I get you something to eat? Or, or you go out to one of them cars out there and say, man, can I, can I bring you something out here to you? I know you don't, don't want to leave this fine-looking Chevrolet, but I'd like to come out here and help you, you know, and bring you something to eat. And matter of fact, that sure is pretty colored. Would you like some mustard to go with that car? <laughs> Amen. Picking, Dan. Amen. But it's, it's going to be a wonderful day. Uh, I don't know how we're going to throw the net exactly. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. But uh, we, uh, we'll get, talk about logistics at more Saturday and figure out how we're going to do it. But, Ronnie, I think we're gonna, it's going to be fun. I, I, like, I watched the children during the, you know, we're going to have a children's church for fourth grade and down uh, on that day for the smaller ones. Cause, but I can tell the other kids, they, they're going to like the animation and, you know, the addition. Plus, we've got two 75-inch TVs out there. So uh, they'll be able to see it from way on back. Amen. Everybody good? Yeah. Father, we love you. We thank you for this night. We thank you, Lord. Lord, our hearts are touched tonight. I sense your presence. Just come into this room and speak that you want to give more love into our hearts. So help us to banish the sins and the things that have have discolored our lives from you. Lord, in that nest, there are times we repeat in life. We, we go from line upon line, and once we get done with one line, you put us back in the nest, and we grow again, and we, we learn to fly again. And Once we get done with this level, well, there's another devil, so we go back in the nest, and we learn again. So, God, wherever we're at in this life, whether it be the nest, the rest, or dealing with the past, or getting ready to take the test, God, I pray that we be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Guys, in the back, there's T-shirts in the fellowship hall. T-shirts in the fellowship hall. Make sure you.